Welcome to Church on the Rise. It's an absolute thrill that you've decided to be with us today. We pray the Word of God will richly bless you today and dwell in you right throughout the week to help you maximize living your life for Jesus. See you on the other side of the service. It's great to be with you both here in the room and online. Today we're talking about His house. And that's really been our theme this year. And we've, you know, there's two types of his house. There's this is his house. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And there's this, which is his house as well. And I want to encourage you, uh, both online and in the room, to really lean in. And uh, there's so many different titles we could call this message. We could call it Keep It Simple, Saints. It's the KISS method. Keep it, keep it simple, saints. Uh, and what we're going to look at is how the early church was birthed and how that we shouldn't really differ too much or shift too far away from it. See, when the Bible talks about membership, it's talking about in a very uh, graphic picture of a body. You know, we're all members of the same body, like your hand is a member of your arm and your foot is a member of your leg. And so we're all connected. And so as we look at the word member, there's going to be a lot of key words that come out of today's message. And can I just add that uh, whatever you hear today, write it down. Uh, take note so that you can unpack the notes later on and uh, kick it around in your connect group. If there's things that you're uh, grappling with and trying to get some deeper understanding on, that's what a connect group's for. And you bring it up in your connect group and say, hey, well, I want to be encouraged by what you got out of the message. What, what inspired you in the message? And be able to share those things and, and kick it around. If you don't have a connect group, get one. Uh, maybe talk to your spouse about things that are coming up. And I, I just think it's great that if we're all one body, that we should all communicate. It's no good my hand off here doing its own thing and then I'm trying to get it back into line all the time. So we, we want our, our body to communicate. Jesus wanted us to be a part of his body. He modelled his life for our benefit. And we've got some scriptures here on the screen. Romans 12 verse 5, pretty sure it's in your notes. In Christ, we who are many form one body. Everyone say one body. And each member belongs, everyone say belongs, to all the others. What a great scripture. In Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to the other. Just look to your neighbour and say, you belong to me. Now look to the other side and say, I belong to you. Then we go on, Galatians 6.10, it says, let us do good to all people especially those who belong, everyone say belong, belong, to the family of believers. Are you in the family of believers this morning? Yeah. What do you believe? Well, I believe in Jesus, so uh, that's going to help us belong. In Christ, we who are many form one body. So in your Bibles, in your notes, circle the word belong. And I want you to unpack what belong actually means. It actually means being vitally connected. The great description of the church is the church is a body and the church is a family. They're not separate. Some churches aren't just a body and some other churches aren't just a family. They're together, the body of Christ and a family. The church is the body of Christ. It's the family of God. And in both cases, membership means something vitally connected, that we're vitally connected. Your hand is a member of your body. It's not separate. If it's disconnected, it'll actually shrivel up and die. If you cut off your ears, well, they're worthless. They have no value if they're detached from the body. If you cut off your legs, your knees, your feet, they're all members of your body and they won't survive unless they are connected. They belong to your body, just like we belong in the body of Christ. The Bible says we have a family, therefore we have family responsibilities. 
I know in our house it's not just come sit down, eat, get up, go back to your room or go turn the TV on and just sit around. There's responsibilities. And each one of our children have different responsibilities uh, on each different day. And uh, we probably should have had seven children because Saturday and Sunday miss out. And uh, so, uh, but it's great. Have more children, you get more done. And uh, it, it really is fantastic. It might send you broke, but um, it, it's just great being in the family unit. But there's responsibilities. You know, each different day, it's someone's responsibility to put the washing on. But it's also the responsibility of the family to get their washing to the laundry. So if your thing didn't get washed, it's not the person who did the laundry's fault, it's you because you left it in your room. We never lose towels in our family. We know where they are. They're all in the boys' bedrooms. <laughs> and so we never lose them. But they, they've got to be brought out. Each family has responsibilities. And I don't know what makes up your household, but there's responsibilities in your household. I'm sure it's just not a pigsty. I'm sure it's just not filled with clutter and junk and overgrown. Like Matt was saying, there's a heart for the house to make sure that it resembles what's going on on the inside. And so is our bodies, that we look after ourselves. You know, we're all connected. The Bible says to do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Some people, when they hear the word church, think of a building on a street corner. You know, as our unpack our theme this year, we, we've fully discovered that the church isn't a building, it's the people. But there is the house of God that we all gather together. And you can't really be a follower of Jesus Christ unless you're a part of being tied to a church family. God, God didn't create send Jesus so we'd all be a bunch of lone rangers. Hey, hi ho, silver, away. Where are you off to? Who are you going with? Well, I don't know. I'm just going that way. No, we belong together. We're better together. I don't want to just be a part of any church. I want to be a part of the church God plants me in. And so you, we see the extension of his body grow and flourish. See, it's a lot like this. Rick Warren puts it this way. He says, if you want to play football and you don't want to be a part of a particular team, well, you're not going to play football. Uh, you've actually got to be a part of the team. And why wouldn't you play for the Broncos? Like, how good are they going? How good are they going? It would be impossible to do something without joining in with others. You want to play football, you've got to join a team. You've got to be a part of a bigger family. We had a great day yesterday and uh, I, I really w would ask you to pray uh, for me coming up this week. Uh, some of you may know uh, in the news this week, Paul Green, who was a famous footballer, uh, sadly took his own life, and, uh, which has created an open door. And I'll actually be speaking to a lot of the senior uh, players in the club down here at BOR Bulldogs on uh, Tuesday evening. And so I'd just be really coveting your prayers around that because when these sorts of things happen, people do come forward with different needs. And we want to encourage people to talk and don't isolate yourself and set aside. And that's what's wonderful about the body of Christ. Please don't suffer in silence. Please don't take your cares and, and it would hold them. Jesus said, cast all your cares upon me so I can care for you. And in this family, I want to encourage you to be speaking out and putting your hand up, being in that connect group where people can stand with you and pray with you. Just as a bee needs a hive, you need a church family. It's like an explorer needs a base camp. It's like a sailor needs a ship. You cannot be what God wants you to be unless you join in with his family under the lordship of Jesus Christ. You can't follow Jesus without being connected to his family and the Bible calls this membership. This is our church and we're all a part of his church. We're going to take a jump into the book of Acts for a little bit of a history lesson in the early church. The book of Acts is written by 
Uh, the Acts of the Apostles is written by Luke, who was also the writer of the Gospel of Luke. Luke was a doctor, a physical doctor, a medical doctor, and he, Acts gives us the exponential growth of the church when it was first birthed. And he gives a very detailed progress report. In Acts chapter 1, verse 15, we see 120 believers. Oh, it's on the screen, great. Acts chapter 2, 41, 3,000 were added to the church that day. In Acts 2, 47, the Lord added daily, everyone say daily, daily. to those being saved. Acts 4, 4, the number of men grew to 5,000. Now note here, it was the number of men grew to 5,000, which means it probably grew to around 15 to 20,000 by the time you add in wives, women and children. So we see an exponential growth. Acts 5.14, more and more believed and a multitude was added. Acts 5.28, you filled Jerusalem with all your teachings. Acts 6 verse 1, the number of disciples rapidly, everyone say rapidly, rapidly. multiplied. So we've gone from adding to multiplication. How good's that? Acts 6, 7, the number of believers increased rapidly. Acts 21, tens of thousands have become believers. Right from that get-go. What was the model they used? Well, there were two places they met. And here at Church on the Rise, we believe these to be vitally important. What are we talking about? In your notes, it says it's a large group of worship and it's a small group for fellowship. A large group for worship and a small group of fellowship. Trish, I think I missed a slide there. I did. Can you just throw that up? It's the one with the big and in the middle. Where did they meet? They met day after day in the temple courts and from house to house. What I love, it's not either or. It's not, not left up to the imagination. They met in the temple. They met in his house. How good's that? In the courts. So there was such a volume of people, they couldn't fit in the church. And in fact, back in that day, they weren't allowed in the church. They were allowed in the court, but this says courts and house to house. It's finally important that we realise both are wonderfully connected. It's a large group for worship. And as Matt said this morning, the worship team did phenomenally well this morning. Uh, I just love where you lead us on a Sunday morning. But it's also a small group of fellowship. If we turn in our Bibles to Acts chapter 2, 41 to 47, and it's a chunky piece of scripture, and we'll read it quickly. Therefore, those who accepted and welcomed his message, what was his message? Repent, be baptized, get saved, meet Jesus. Well, it was about 3,000 souls. And they steadfastly persevered, devoting themselves constantly to the instruction and fellowship of the apostles, to the breaking of bread, including the Lord's Supper and prayers. I love this verse. This is in the Amplified Version. And I, I just love Amplified because it gets to turn it up just a little bit. It sort of expands it just a little bit more. I love the words, the key words. They steadfastly persevered. I love the communion message this morning, Pamela. Keep moving. Keep going through. What's that? To persevere. Devoting themselves constantly to the instruction and fellowship of the apostles. And a sense of awe, reverential fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were performed through the apostles and who are the special messengers. And all who believed, who adhered to and trusted in and relied on Jesus Christ were united and together they had everything in common. And they sold their possessions, both their landed property and their movable goods, and distributed the price among all according as any had need. And day after day they regularly assembled in the temple with united purpose, and in their homes they broke bread, including the Lord's Supper. They partook of their food with gladness and simplicity and generous hearts." constantly praising God and being in favour and goodwill with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved from spiritual death. Sounds like a great picture, doesn't it? I wonder what that would look like in our community. 
where churches are no longer big enough because God's adding to the church daily. And I'm not just meaning church on the rise. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the Lutheran church began to overflow, if the Uniting church began to overflow and the Baptist church began to overflow and the Anglican church didn't have to meet fortnightly and the Catholic church didn't have to meet on the off fortnight that they could fill their buildings with people being saved. And I want to encourage you, let's keep it simple, saints. Uh, let's, let's bring it right back down to the things that matter and have eternal value and not get sidetracked on things that have no uh, resemblance in our spiritual walk according to our salvation. Let's bring it right back. If you're in a group, we're going to look at seven quick things that are going to help you evaluate your own walk with God within your connect group, within the life of your church. Connect groups are a healthy way just to stay connected. And the reason we need to stay connected is we need to know what's being served up. Uh, one of my children have a phrase they say at every meal. Is this cooked properly? And we've got to dissect and cut it open and look at it from every angle. Is it cooked properly? Because I'm not eating it if it's not cooked properly. And we've got to peel it back layer by layer. Well, it's the same way we have connect groups that are connected to the big body, the family, because we want to know that what you're getting served is cooked properly. It carries the same heart and vision. And when you eat it, you're not going to die or get sick or fall by the wayside. And so that's why we want to be together, not running off doing our own thing. And so this is how we maintain healthy groups in the life of the church. There's a key word that keeps showing up in the book of Acts, and it's a word devoted. Well, in this passage of Scripture, devoted. Do you know what the word devoted means? It means very loving or loyal. In another uh, dictionary, it says extremely loving and loyal. And it gives a little sentence there. He was a devoted husband. Listen to this definition. Given over to the display, study or discussion of. And then it uses another little sentence. There's a museum devoted to her work. And then it, I just got arrested by that and I thought... What's on show with my life? If my life is a museum and it's on display, what devotedness is on offer here? What does it look like I'm devoted to? And it's a good question to ask ourselves. What do our own lives look like we're devoted to? One of the greatest challenges, we actually looked at this in our men's group the other night, and I'm not going to blurt all the secrets out, but uh, it, it's just a simple thought that's escaped me. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't supposed to say it. Oh, it'll come back if I was supposed to say it. What does our life look? Let's go straight in. Okay, what, number one, if you want a healthy group, a healthy church... They studied the Word of God together. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching. What is the Apostle teaching? It's this, it's the Bible. The New Testament was written by the Apostles, Paul, John, Peter, Mark, James, and a couple of others. There were Apostles that wrote the New Testament. Now, these guys didn't have it as such like we have it today, but they were writing letters to the churches. that weren't, They weren't like a letter that we write today. I want you to understand that the letters that we have in the Bible might actually help you to treat your Bible with a little bit more reverence. Because the early church was under mass amounts of persecution. If people were discovered to be Jesus followers, they were hoiked, they were pulled aside and sometimes never seen again. And these letters that went to the churches weren't put in a lovely white envelope and clearly addressed and go through the mail system and arrive a few days later to its destination. They were carried under the cloak of darkness, shrouded, hidden on someone's person with groups going in different directions so that they didn't get caught so that the letter could arrive safely and they're the letters that inspire us today to live for Jesus. And when you think, oh, it was just a letter, put in, oh, I missed the postage, I'll put a little stamp on it. No, it wasn't like that. It was carried 
within fear of death sometimes. I just think that's phenomenal that we get to still be inspired by these letters today. It wasn't bound in a book, it was a letter. And we've always, always got to remember the Bible is God's word and it has authority. And it's the authority we base our lives upon. And if we're not reading God's word, what authority are you allowing to dictate into your life? What did they do? They devoted themselves so richly that they read the word of God together. The second thing they did was they fellowship together. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They said that getting together was a lovely thing. It was something to fashion your life upon. They devoted themselves to fellowship, <coughs> get into a connect group. Can I put this out there? And I'm just going to put it out there. I don't see any rotten tomatoes or fruit or, or anything like that. But if you want to have friends in church, can I, I'll tell you one way you get great friends in church. You ready? Write it down. Frequency. Uh, a lot of times people say, oh, church isn't very friendly or you know, I'm not really making any friends and I'm not being down on you. I'm just saying if you frequent a lot more often and those other people frequent a lot more often, you get to build relationship. How many of you know relationships take time? And if you're just ships in the night, like if you're here one week and those really cool people you like are there the next week but you're not there the next week but then you're both there the next week, it could be a month before you get to see people. And if you want great fellowship... It's all around one word, frequency. Go to your connect groups. Don't miss your connect groups. Don't be ships in the night, but get together and have frequent fellowship. And they all ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And I wonder if they said, is this cooked properly? <laughs> How many have grown fatter over your fellowship meals? Put on a few extra kilos, you're having too much good time together. But, you know, people relate well around food. I know in our culture they do. I know in other cultures they do. Food are a great thing. So have fellowship with one another. Point number three, and we've talked about this a number of times this morning already, they shared communion together. Important to remember Christ. They didn't just do it, they devoted themselves to it. In, f in fact, they made it a hallmark of their life. And that, you see the word devoted it means they put high priority on it and i want to encourage you when we come together as the family of god we put high priority on it if, if you've got friends visiting from out of town can, can i just encourage you don't stop home from church on that day well i've just got people coming around then what greater opportunity to say hey what a perfect day for you to come visit because guess where i am i'll be in church from nine till twelve and why don't you come join me? I'd love you to see the family of faith, the group of believers that take very good care of me and have become lifelong friends in the house of God. In fact, the added bonus is I reckon you'll love the service too. Now they may say, well, I'm not really into that church thing. But fine, and I'll meet you for lunch at 12 because that's where I'll be. And sometimes we step in and we step out and what do our convictions look like? Well, the Bible says they were devoted to these things. They didn't just take it easy, easy come, easy go. Oh, church will be there next week. And it's a very easy mindset to slip into. Yeah. Let's put a priority on it where we devote. And they, such did they do that, they had communion together. Sometimes we have communion in our Tuesday morning prayer. Do you have communion in your connect groups? I'm not saying make it a religious law, but make room for it. You don't have to have it every time, but make room for it. It was the Lord's Supper. There's something great in terms of what we remember about who Jesus Christ is and what he did for us and what the Father did for us in sending his Son so that we could have a oneness with our Saviour. Communion, it means this, an openness to God and an openness to each other. And both are vitally important in our walk with Jesus. Point number four, they prayed for each other. Hey, there's a great thought. Oh, I'd just love it if our groups, no matter where you meet, when you meet, you just took a moment to pray for one another. 
Well, I don't know what to pray for. Well, pray for something. Pray for the blessing of God. Pray for the favor of God. And pray. Stand with people. Find out where the tough yards are. Find out where the long halls are. And pray and believe God. I want to encourage connect groups to keep a prayer journal in your connect group. We had a girl in uh, one of our connect groups when we were young adult leaders. And then she had a shopping list on what type of husband she was looking for. And uh, some of the points were quite funny. But she was serious. And after we got to finish laughing, she wasn't. She was ready to pray. And you know, today, she's happily married and she had every one of those checkpoints on her list ticked off. She, didn't, she had to go across the globe to find him. And there was a lot of, you know, dirt, 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 dirt. But what was it? Prayer. We, we took time to pray. We took time to believe God. Take, take moments to pray. You know, we've just come off a teaching series and uh, uh, one of the things I think is vitally important that when you give your offering, you pray over it. Don't just give it and go, oh, well, I hope that sticks. No, no, you give and you pray over it. And you say, Lord, I consecrate this. I give it. And I say, thank you. Uh, one of our children, after watching one of the, uh, the videos, came home. I didn't really know what they're talking about. He said, Dad, how do I do this? I said, what are you doing? He said, how do I set up the phone to give my tithe? I said, okay, well, this is how you do it. And so I said, what are you going to tithe? He said, I'm going to tithe on what's in my bank account right now. So he had $40 in his bank account and he tithed $4. Well, at the same time, he'd just started a job that wasn't going so well and he'd worked probably 12 hours without being paid. All he wanted to do was quit. We said, don't quit until you get paid. It's easier to get paid while you're still working, but don't quit. Do you know, whatever that dispute was, right when he was ready to resign, he tithed on the Sunday. We get a message during the week to say, hey, we've got um, all of that money that he's owed from the shifts and that was put back into his account by the next Sunday. Now, I, I'm not telling you anything that can't be created or made up. He tithed, trusted God. And so what did he do straight away when the money got paid to him? Tithed it again. What's he doing? He's trusting God. What do we do? We minister to one another. But we do it through prayer. Allow the eyes of understanding to be open. What's that? Revelation. When we talk about our eyes, Lord, I want to see. Well, what's that? Revelation in the spirit realm. When we say, Lord, I want my ears to hear. Jesus said it multiple times. To him who has an ear, let him hear. What's he saying? Give understanding to what's about to happen. We pray and God will open things up before us. It's amazing what happens when you hear a testimony like that. One of our other children went running around the house and found a dollar's worth of silver coin. And he came and brought it to the table and says, here's my 10 cents, Dad. I said, what are you giving that to me for? Well, I want to have happen what happened to him. <laughs> I said, well, don't give it to me. You give it to the church. <laughs> But pray, keep a prayer journal, encourage one another. Hey, remember when we prayed for this? Well, look at the answered prayer. So your prayer journal should have the needs of your group, but also the answers to those prayers. They will encourage you, they will comfort you, and they will strengthen your relationships together. Point number five, what did they do? They ministered to one another. They gave to anyone as he had a need. That's the power of small groups, really. You know, someone's mower goes on the blink and then someone needs a mower. Well, who are you going to call? Your connect group. Hey, you haven't got a mower I could borrow? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'll come do it for you. you. You just sit back, you suck on the orange juice and you watch me go around this yard. Oh, it's eat a perler. But what is it that you need? Maybe when you're sick, do you need some meals made? Well, put your hand up and say, hey, going through a bit of a toughie at the moment. And Connect Group gets around, provide meals, and we look after one another. It's the body looking out and helping each other. Whatever you need, it's how you make it through a tough time. Point number six, they worship together. We praise God together and enjoyed favour. It's amazing what happens when you worship. You know, we actually take a moment in our Tuesday morning prayer to worship before we just dive straight in 
with prayer we actually worship because I believe worship sets our heart right. I actually believe worship is prayer. It's elevating God to his rightful place. It's me putting me into where I belong and putting God where he belongs. So, you know, my prayers never get bigger than me. They get, never get bigger than God, I mean. They can get bigger than me if I get in under all the stuff I'm not supposed to be under, but worship just lifts me and helps me rise above. And it's so important to praise and to honour God. They did it in the early church. They were spiritually strengthened. Do you know, a lot of songs that are written today are biblically based. They're not just lovely kumbaya songs. They're, they're Bible. You're singing scripture. And there's no more powerful word than the word of God. And if my words are going to adorn anything on my life, I want it to be the word of God. It brings us together in fellowship. It puts God in his rightful place. It's for our benefit. It keeps us going. Have you ever thought of the analogy of a fire? You can have a raging fire, but if you take a coal out of that fire and think, it's going to do really well on its own over here because it's really hot now. Do you know what happens? It just goes, it loses its heat. It loses its fervency when it separates itself from the core of the fire. You get it back into the belly of that fire, Oh, and it's singing again. Come on, we're better together, church. We're created to be together. We're created as a family and we're created to worship God as small groups as well. The seventh thing they did, they invited others. Have you got an other in your world? It's so important that this gospel that we have isn't just kept to ourselves. That we've got others that we share our testimony and our story to. There's so many empty chairs in the building. That means there's room for your friends. There's room for your others. And if you live so uh, restricted from having unsaved others, pray and ask God to use your life. Lord, who, who, who do you need me to reach out to? Who do you want in your family? Because remember John 3.16? God doesn't want anyone to perish. So it's like, who do you want in your family that needs me to invade their world? Do you know you could be the answer to a grandma's prayer? I don't know how many of you got saved because your grandma never gave up praying. But you could be the answer to that prayer. The person that comes along at just the right time in just the right way drops a word in season and someone's life gets changed. Every day the number of their group continued to grow. I just think they were talking all the time. Didn't matter who they were meeting, they were talking. Sometimes we keep where we go a secret. Do you know the greatest, uh, the greatest testimony of your faithfulness is when you pull your car out of the driveway on a Sunday morning? You may never have men mentioned Jesus to your neighbours but they know you go to church because every Sunday morning at the same time you reverse that car out and it's one way you begin to share a testimony of the goodness of God because people know where you're going. Where would they be going on a Sunday? Uh, let's think about that. Church maybe. Maybe we need to dust off the letter that we did a little while ago. And we wrote letters and saying, hey, if you've got any prayer needs and we dropped them in the letterbox of our street, Maybe we need to get that letter active again that just simply said, if you've got any prayer needs, then come and put it in our letter boxes. We'll be praying for you. We're going to believe God for a breakthrough. And it, sometimes that's a little bit scary. Oh, what are they going to think? What are they going to think? I want them to think that when they drop that letter in the letter box, that God could possibly be real. That things are going to change. That Jesus is going to enter the situation. Come on, let's be an inviting church. We bring others. Every day their number grew. The church is a growing, living organism. Growing every day. Why? Because we're growing every day. We subject ourselves to the Word of God and have those things challenged in our hearts. So whether it's for a connect group, whether it's for you personally, Pastor Rick Warren has a great measure on on a message like this. And so he just says, on each of the points, put a plus or a minus. 
You put a minus on the things where you're not doing so well and you put a plus on the ones where you are doing so well. So give yourself a minus or a plus. Are we growing closer to each other? Plus or a minus? Are we taking communion each week together? Plus or a minus? If it's a minus, we need to work on that one. Number four, are we praying for one another? Plus or a minus? Number five, do we help each other in practical ways? Do we help with needs and running other errands? Plus or a minus? Number six, do we worship together? Number seven, is our group helping others come to Christ? Come on, let's stand to our feet as we pray over this word. This is the early church, and why can't it be the old church, the now church? But we come around the word, we come around fellowship, we come around communion, we come around worship, we come around praying for one another. We come around outreach and reaching out to other people. Go on, let's hold our hands out. Father God, as we've sung today, we surrender our lives to your Lordship. And Lord, we want to see you clearly. We want to invite you to pour your spirit out on all flesh. We ask, Lord God, that you fill us afresh today. So today, Lord, we commit to this personal responsibility of being your church. Help me through your Holy Spirit to work through these things today, to establish them as non-negotiables in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. We know that today's message would have presented some challenges or even inspired you in any particular way. If you want to take the next step in your walk with Jesus, please email us at wecare at cotr.org.au. Today, you may be looking to make Jesus Christ the author and the finisher of your faith. In other words, asking him to be the Lord of your life because we want to help you take that next step with Jesus. If you're just requiring prayer, then please drop us a line at that same email address because we want to stand with you in you taking the next step in faith in your journey with God. God bless you and we hope to see you again real soon.